Amen. Praise the Lord tonight, church. Praise the Lord tonight, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord with you tonight. Amen. Can you fix me up on the monitors or something? Sounds a little echoey here. Praise the name of the Lord. We just give God all the honor and the glory. We thank God that we're here today. Praise the name of the Lord in the house of the Lord with all of you. Amen. Worshiping and praising the name of the Lord here this fourth day of November. Amen. 2020, the year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. It's good to be, amen, in choir in the Lord, in the house of the Lord, and to hear his word. But before we get into the word of the Lord and the lesson that God has laid upon my heart, amen, for the church tonight, amen, we want to uh, worship the Lord with that little song that says, His name is wonderful. Worship the Lord with us right there where you're at at home. Amen. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King. to St. Matthew chapter, amen, 6 and verse 33. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be here. It's good to be have you with us and for all of us to be together. Praise the name of the Lord, even though, amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Elections have been going on, and hallelujah, that's still undecided. Nobody knows, amen, and only God does. And so, amen, we're going to just, amen, get into the Word of God, because if that, amen, you could not can't be certain of things that are going on in this world, but you can be certain of what God's Word says. That, hallelujah, you can be certain of. Can somebody say amen? Matthew 6 and 33 reads as follows. Amen. Chapter 630, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I need more monitor, brother. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless our uh, PA, amen, sound men and media, amen, ministry. God bless them and our pianist, Brother Peter. God bless them for helping us all the time. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Bible just, amen, hallelujah. We're going to be talking to you today, as a matter of fact, before I proceed, amen, the providence of God. The providence of God, which means nothing more, the divine protection and guidance of God. The providence of God, which is the divine protection and guidance of God. And before I begin elaborating or expounding, let us go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you to give you all the honor and the glory and the thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here this evening, one mind and one accord. We ask your blessing to be upon each and every one of us that have come to hear your word. Help us to be hearers and doers of your word, almighty God. Help me, almighty God, as your messenger, Lord, to speak your word the way you laid it upon my heart for your people, for your church here tonight, and for those that are hearing. Almighty God, help us, Lord Jesus Christ, to hallelujah, apply what we are about to hear, that when you return, you will find us faithful and fruitful, confiding in your word for every area of our life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Bible that we have read, the verse we have read there in Matthew 6, 33, says that you, the, it encourages us, amen, it tells us, it instructs us, to seek first the kingdom of God. I need to find, I need to seek first the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? It's the salvation of God. It is the will of God. It is the word of God. It is, a, amen, to please the Lord. It is to seek first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. The salvation of God, amen, and the righteousness of God, which is to perform the will of the will of his will, amen, towards one another. Can somebody say amen? And then the Bible goes on to say, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. You need to understand, because we're talking about the providence of God, which is the divine protection and guidance of God. Because in the times in which we are living, we need to know and understand that we are, hallelujah, if you're serving the Lord and you got your heart, straight you got your heart right with god and you're right with god and you're 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 living for god today you need to understand that we have the divine protection and the guidance of god that is the providence of god we're going to be talking about that today amen but you need to understand that as long as we're seeking first the kingdom of god and the righteousness of god God is going to, amen, add all the things that we need in our lives. That gonna give them, he's going to give them to us. He's going to provide them for us. You see, because God sovereignly, or he alone, in absolute power, works all things according to his will. Can somebody say amen? So he works all things according to his will. Not according to the will of him or her, anybody else. Amen. But he... God sovereignly or alone in absolute power works all things according to his will. Even all the things that are going on in the world today, even though, amen, God doesn't do these things, he allows these things. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So he works all things according to his will. Praise the name of the Lord because God is in absolute control. He allows even the wicked to live. He even allows the, 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 the evil, amen, to do the things that they do. He allows it. He doesn't, he doesn't condone it. He's not happy about it, but he allows it. Can somebody say amen? Because our God is sovereign. 
He is in he alone and is in absolute power. Let's read Ephesians 1.11. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I still don't have, I hear myself in the house, but I don't have monitor clearly. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 1.11 says this. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. We have obtained an inheritance. Being predestinated. Amen. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. In whom we also as saints of God, children of God, people of God, as a church, we have obtained an inheritance from him. Amen. Being predestinated according to his purpose. Amen. The purpose of him who worketh all things according to Amen. To the counsel of his own will. Praise the name of the Lord. So whatever God wants is what's going to take place. Whatever God wants is what's going, amen, to. Hallelujah. Amen. Inevitably, amen, be fulfilled. Can somebody say amen? So, amen. As long as we understand that we're part of that, we've been predestinated. Amen. As long as we stay in his perfect will, then we're predestinated according to the purpose of him, according to his will, in other words. Amen, because he's the one that works all things after the counsel of his own will. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So God sovereignly, he alone in absolute power works all things according to his will. Praise the name of the Lord. So that we can be certain of. Amen. Hallelujah. God's sovereign rule extends over all things. Amen, because we're talking about, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The providence of God. Amen. God's sovereign rule extends over all things. His providence, once again, is the divine protection and guidance of God because he alone is in absolute power over all things. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So God's sovereign rule extends over all things. Psalms 103 verse 19 tells us this. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Can somebody say amen? The Lord has prepared. He rules and extends over all. The, his, his kingdom, he rules over everything. Even though there seems like there's a lot of things going that are out of control. That it seems like things are just uh, 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 chaotic. Things are um, amen, uh, not, not uh, in order. They're out of order. Amen. But nonetheless, God's sovereign rule extends over all things. Because the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Praise the name of the Lord. Even though you might not think that he rules over everything, he does. Amen. Because he has the last say-so over everything that transpires in time and in space and in this world. Can somebody say amen? And so since God, amen, you need to understand, praise the name of the Lord. He cares for us. And since God cares for the birds, the Bible says, and the flowers also, he certainly will then take care, amen, and care for his children, us his children. Can somebody say amen? And let us read Matthew 6, 26, and then verse 30. Amen, of the same chapter. 6, 26, and then 6, 30. This is what the word of the Lord says. Behold, the fowls of the air, or the birds, in other words, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. He takes care of the birds. And are you not much better than they? Aren't we better than a bunch of birds? Absolutely we are. Amen. God, amen, loves us and he cares for us. Amen. Because if he takes care of the birds, in other words, he's going to take care of you and me. Can somebody say amen? Especially if we're doing his will. Especially if we're, if we're uh, uh, proving to him, amen, and pleasing him by, amen, by uh, keeping his commandments and living according to his word. Absolutely. You know that he's going to care for us. And uh, amen, because he does. He cares for us. Amen. He cares for us. Amen. Just as much, if not more, than a bunch of birds. Can somebody say amen? Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe, amen, the grass of the field, amen, hallelujah, which today, which today is and tomorrow and morrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 
Do you think that God in his, all of his wonder and splendor and glory, if he's going to clothe the grass of the field, amen, which is here today and gone tomorrow, amen, shall he not, don't you think he's going to clothe you and me? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord, O ye of little faith. In other words, we need to have faith to understand God's going to take care of us. Can somebody say amen? He's not going to leave us naked. He's not going to leave us starving. He's not going to leave us messed up. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you always, even till the end of the world. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So that's the promise that we have of God. But we got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Can somebody say amen? But you got to be doing what God wants you to do. You can't be just one day I'm in church and the, and the other six days of the week I'm doing my own thing. It doesn't work that way. Hello, somebody. Living for God means you're living for God every day. And you're under the providence of God. Amen. And because, listen, because when you're living for God every day, you can be assured and you have the best insurance policy in the world praise the name of the lord because of the providence of god over your life because amen he guarantees that as long as you're in his perfect will he's going to take care of you amen and even if it seems like he doesn't take care of you he's still you're still going to win in the end because you're in him and he's in you can somebody say amen Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. If he takes care of the birds and the grass and everything and the flowers and everything, he's going to definitely take care of you and me. Can somebody say amen? You see, God controls all the forces of nature. And he provides for all of the creatures, especially his, us, his children. Amen? He, amen. he controls all the forces of nature. And he provides for all of his creatures. Amen. Especially Amen. Those of us that are his children. Let's read Psalms 145, verse 16. Amen. And also verse 20, please. Amen. This is what the word of the Lord says. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Amen. Everything that opens its hand and amen, is going to be satisfied the desire of every living thing. Amen. Verse 20. The Lord preserves all them, remember what I told you, that love him. He's going to take care of you. He's going to preserve you. Amen. All them that love him, but all the wicked will he allow to be destroyed. Can somebody say amen? So let me tell you something. I want to be on God's side. It's just as simple as that. Amen. It all depends on what you want. Amen. You're a, we are free moral agents to choose Amen. Whatsoever we choose. That's the way God made us. He made us free moral ages to choose. Amen. God, to serve God or not to serve God. Can somebody say amen? The Lord preserves all them, though this is the guarantee from the word of God. The insurance policy you have. The Lord preserveth them. He's going to preserve you. All them that love him. But all the wicked will he destroy. He's going to allow you to be destroyed if you don't serve him, if you don't love him, if you don't give your life to him. So I encourage you, if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I encourage you, man, what are you waiting for? Amen. To find out, amen, that the president doesn't have all the answers. To find out that there's not a government in this world that has all the answers. To find out, amen, that money isn't the answer. To find out that your career isn't the answer. Amen. To in the eventually in the end, the Bible says that every knee shall bow, and every tongue's gonna confess. Hallelujah! That Jesus Christ is Lord. I'd rather bow down now and be saved, than to bow down later on and go to hell. Hello, somebody. It's just as simple as that. Can somebody say Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Hallelujah. God used ravens. To take care of Elijah the prophet. Imagine those, those black raven birds that some of us don't like. I know I don't like them, man. They, they bug me, man. They come by my house and get away from me. They remind me, of a, they remind me of something evil. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible says that God used ravens, those birds, to take care of Elijah the prophet. Because Elijah was doing his will. Amen. God use the Amen. God works in mysterious ways, brother and sister, and he'll he'll do whatever he has to do in order to fulfill 
His will. That's just as simple as that. He used these ravens. And let's read. We'll read it so that way you'll see what I'm talking about. 1 Kings 17, 4, 5, and 6 tells us this. 1 Kings, beginning at chapter 17, verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. He's talking to Elijah. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. When you're there at the brook, when you're there at the creek, when you're there at the water, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Verse 5. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. In other words, he was an obedient man. He did what God told him to do. For he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Listen to what the word of God says. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. My goodness. Praise the name of the Lord. Took care of him. Amen. Provided for him. All he had to do was do what God told him to do. Praise the name of the Lord. You and I have problem doing what God tells us to do. And I don't know why. Praise the name of the Lord. We're struggling and we always struggling and, 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 and to amen to do something very simple for the Lord. And it shouldn't be that way because God cares for us. Amen. He died for us. He cares for us. But all we have to do is do his will. And you know what? To be honest with you, we think we have it tough. You don't know what tough is. We don't know what tough is. You go to some of those folks in other uh, third world countries and they have it rough. They don't have no pews. They don't have no carpeting. They don't have no roof over their head. They're out there under the stars, amen, in the dirt, the scalso, amen, barefooted. But they're worshiping God. Hallelujah. And God is moving in a mighty way in their midst because they have faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith. Amen. As of, a, as, a, as of a mustard seed to see mountains moved. Can somebody say amen? And that's all you and I have to, have to understand. That if we have as little, a little bit of faith. God don't need a lot. He just needs a little bit of whatever you have. And give it to God. And God will use it in a mighty way. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. God also by sending his people. He even sent his people. Amen. Bread from heaven. Manna. They called it manna. From heaven each day. Every day he provided for them out in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness. In the desert. They didn't have no. They didn't have no. Uh, amen. Uh, way of uh, making food or having food. So God would provide manna. Amen. From heaven every day. And God revealed his faithfulness. His power and his love. Let us read. In Exodus chapter 16. Verse 14 and 15. This is what he says. And when the dew that lay was gone up before the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. Verse 15. And when the ch children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. They didn't know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given to you, to eat. Can somebody say amen? You see, because the Lord provides us with all we'll ever need in this life. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Not only to make it through this one, but for the next one also. Can somebody say amen? Let me tell you something, because we're living in uncertain times, and so people don't know what tomorrow may bring, and don't, you don't have to worry about it. Don't fret yourself about it. Matter of fact, worry is just a, 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 a a sin because you're not trusting the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. You're leaning to your own understanding and basically panicking. That's all. That's all worry is. Amen. You see, praise the name of the Lord. The Lord provided for them, even though they were in the wilderness. How do you think they felt? They left Egypt. They had onions. They had comida. They had all kinds of different things over there. Amen. And when they went out in the wilderness, they have nothing. Amen. So they were, they were not sure of how are we going to eat? How are we going to eat out here in the wilderness? I and mean, they started to turn against Moses. Amen. You brought us out here to die. We don't have water. We don't have food. We don't have nothing. And yet God provided all those things that they needed because he always does. He always provides for us. Praise the name of the Lord. But you got to trust him and you got to believe it and you got to in order to receive it. Can somebody say amen? You see, because the Lord provides us with all we'll ever need in this life. 
amen, to not only make it through this time, but also for the next one that we're going to go through, amen, in the future. Can somebody say amen? You see, so we need to understand that God is the potter and we are the clay. He's the master. He's the master builder. He's the one that's making us into the vessel of honor that he wants us to be. But you got to let him break you and make you all over again. We need to let him do what he has to do in, a, in order so that we can be that vessel of honor that he wants us to be. Because remember, the providence of God, hallelujah, amen, is exactly, amen, the divine protection and the guidance of God. Amen, because he, he, amen, he, we are in his, under his providence. Amen, and we are under his divine protection and the guidance of God. Can somebody say amen? Because God is the potter and we are the clay. And so we need to be submissive to him. Amen, because I'm not the potter. I'm nothing more than clay in the hands of the potter. You and I are all the same. Let's read Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord reads as follows. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, amen, he wrought a work on the wheels. Verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, verse 6, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Can I do with you, amen, as this potter does with the clay? Says the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord, somebody. You need to understand, brothers and sisters, that we are in the hands of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We are in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And we need, him to, allow, we need to allow him to break us and make us all over again. The way it seems right for the potter to make us because he knows, hey, you know what? My son or my daughter, they didn't come out right like they should have because, amen, I made them right in the beginning. But because of the cares of this life or the, the mistreatment or the abuses or the, uh, I mean, the things that they have suffered or gone through in this world has caused them, amen, to get, to be marred, amen. Praise the name of the Lord in the hands of this world. So let me make you all over again into that vessel of honor. Amen. That is that the potter knows how to do because he's the potter, not we. He is the potter. We are the clay. We need to let him to break us and make us and mold us all over again because a lot of times what we've been through in this life messes people up. Amen. And you know what? It's sad as I just elaborate a little bit, amen, upon this topic that I'm thinking about right here. There are so many people that are losing out with God today because of a bad experience they had, amen, in the church of the living God. Because they had a bad experience as a young person. Because they had a bad experience as a young adult or even as an adult in the church. And something didn't go right. Let me tell you something. Don't blame God. Don't do that. Amen. Remember, people are the ones that make mistakes, but God never makes a mistake. Amen. And, and I pray and I appeal to those, amen, that have ever been damaged. Amen. In the hands of life, somewhere along life's way. Amen. Don't ever stop, amen, giving God an opportunity, amen, to break you and to make you over again into the vessel that he wants to make you. Because it's never too late, hallelujah, until we're dead. Once, once we're dead, then it's too late. Amen. But as long as there's life in you, there's still hope and there's an opportunity for you to make your way back to the kingdom of God and for you to become a vessel of honor because God wants to use you. It's not too late. God died for you. Amen. He didn't die for you. Oh, everybody that's perfect. Amen. None of us are perfect. Praise the name of We all fall short of the glory of God every day. 
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need to come back to the Lord and give your life back to God. And don't worry about people. Hallelujah. People are people. Amen. They're always going to have something to say and have an opinion. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. But the thing is, you need to worry. You need to concern yourself with what God thinks, not what people think. Amen. God's the one that's going to, hallelujah, save you. He's the only one that can save you. And so we need to get back to the, the, foot, the feet of the master. We need to get back to the potter. Amen. So that he can make you all over again into that vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. Because like he told Israel, can I not do with you? Amen. As this potter does with this clay, why don't you let me, hallelujah, amen, make you over again the same way this potter makes this clay. He was telling the house of Israel because they would resist, amen, amen, what God wanted to do in their lives. Don't resist what God wants to do in your life. Allow him, amen, to use you and to, and to make you all over again, hallelujah, into a vessel of honor. Can somebody say amen? God uses wicked rulers to fulfill his purposes even for you and me. He uses even the wicked, even evil people, amen, to fulfill his purposes for all of us, his children. Can somebody say amen? And we're going to read out of the book of Ezra, amen, chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1, verse 6, and verse 10. Amen. And this is what the, the word of the Lord tells us. Now, after these things in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Saraiah. Amen. Verse 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon because they were in captivity. And he was already scribe in the law of Moses. He used to, amen, write things down. Amen. Which the Lord God of Israel had given him. And the king, which is Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Amen. That king granted him all of what Ezra requested according to the hand to, to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Amen. Verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Let me tell you something. Ezra was a, 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 a person amen, that knew the word of God, amen, and he would always also write down, amen, events as they transpired. And even though, amen, during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, which they were in captivity to, Ezra, the son of Seraiah, amen, this Ezra, he went up from Babylon, amen, he went up from captivity, and, he is a re and the ready scribe that he was in the laws and the things of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given to him, the king allowed him or granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord of his God, which was upon Ezra. Can somebody say amen? You know why? Because, amen, even this ungodly king, God used King Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Amen. To even bless God's people even while they were in captivity. Remember, God uses, God can do anything. He works in mysterious ways. He used wicked, this wicked ruler, this wicked king, ungodly king, King Artaxerxes. Amen. Who was the king of Persia. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To fulfill his purpose for the children of God in order to bless God's people. So God uses wicked rulers to fulfill his purposes for the children of God. And that's even for you and I. God will even use our enemies to bless us. Because we are willing to do God's will and not just to do your own thing. If a man or a woman proposes in their hearts, amen, hallelujah, to do the will of God, and I mean to be in the perfect will of God, Hallelujah. God and, and chooses not to just do their own thing. Of course, you got to work. you got to live. you got to do all that kind of stuff. Of course. But not just that. Amen. You choose, amen, to perform and fulfill the will of God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you're willing to do God's will. Hallelujah. God will even use our enemies, your enemies, our enemies to bless us. 
Praise the name of the Lord, because that's exactly what he did right here with Ezra, amen, and the children of Israel, amen, while they were in captivity, amen, to King Artaxerxes, amen, the king of Persia at that time. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So God blesses those who by faith take refuge in him. We got to take refuge in God. Don't go run into the, the, the arms of the world. Don't go run into the world. Don't go run into all that nonsense. Amen. We need to run to God. Can somebody say amen? God blesses those who take refuge, amen, in him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The entire book of Ruth reveals this very beautifully. I love the story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz and, 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 and uh, all the other characters that are in the word of God in the, in the book of Ruth. Amen. The entire book of Ruth reveals this very beautifully, how God blesses those who take refuge in him. And that's, what, and that's what Ruth did. She took refuge in the God of, amen, the God of Naomi. Praise the name of the Lord. Her, her mother-in-law, amen. She took, because she knew, I'm going to tell you why. I'm convinced, it doesn't say why, but I'm convinced that Naomi was a good example to her, even though her sons died that were married, amen, to Orpah, amen, and to Ruth. Praise the name of the Lord. Their, their, their husbands died, so Orpah went back to the world. But Ruth says, you know what, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep following you. I, mean, I want to serve the God that you serve. I want to live for the God that you live, that you live for. Praise the name of the Lord. And because she was so, amen, such a good example and a follower of, of the God of, uh, of, of Israel, amen, and the God of Naomi, praise the name of the Lord. This is what Boaz, a relative of Naomi, said in Ruth chapter 2, verse 12 and verse 20. The Lord recompensed thy work. In other words, the Lord bless you for all that you're doing. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. I mean, this is what Boaz was declaring and pronouncing over Ruth, this Moabite who came from the world. Just like many of us, we came from the world. But because we were determined to serve the God, hallelujah, of our salvation, the almighty God, Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of Israel. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are blessed. Just like Ruth was being blessed. And even that having that blessing pronounced upon her by Boaz. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. Amen. Under whose wings thou art come to trust. Because you come to believe and to, and to, and to live and to dwell under the protection of Hallelujah, that, 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 that umbrella of protection, amen, praise the name of the Lord, the wings of protection of the Lord God Almighty. Verse 20, and Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, which is Ruth, Naomi told Ruth, her daughter-in-law, blessed be he of the Lord, who has not left off his kindness to the living, amen, and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless Ruth and Naomi. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ruth, in that she was a Moabite, yet because she forsook the, the world, she, amen, walked away from the world. Hallelujah. And the God, the gods of her people, amen, and embraced the one true God, the Lord, amen, not only blessed her life, then yet, amen, used her to give birth, to, amen, bring the birth line from which the Messiah would actually come through the, amen, through the lineage of Ruth, this Moabite who came from the world. Tell me that God will not use somebody that comes from the world to fulfill his perfect will. You better believe he will. This would have never happened if she hadn't sought refuge in the Almighty God. If she had never, amen, wanted to serve God and live for God, this would have never happened. Naomi was blessed at the same time because she had a daughter-in-law that embraced her God. And for this, Naomi was blessed to have a grandson, even though she had no husband or sons left. Amen. So the Lord, amen, blessed all these faithful women of God, amen, in his perfect will. Like I said, amen, in the beginning right here, God blesses those who by faith that take refuge in him. 
And that's what God did, amen, in the, in the case of Naomi, in the life of Ruth, I'm sorry, amen, who was a Moabite, amen, was, came from the world, but because she fell in love with the God of her mother-in-law, Naomi, amen, the Lord blessed her in a mighty way, hallelujah, to even bring forth, amen, who eventually would be, hallelujah, a descendant, amen, praise the name of the Lord, or a, a, one of the forerunners, amen, of the, of the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ himself. Praise the name of the Lord. So Naomi was blessed because she had a daughter-in-law that embraced her God. Amen. She says, oh, man, don't, don't, don't ask me not to be following you. Because Naomi tried to tell her, you know what? Go back. I don't have no more kids. I don't have no more sons to give you. Why don't you go back to the Moab? Go back to where you came from. I don't got nobody to, to give you kids anymore. I don't got nobody to marry you anymore. And Ruth told her, don't, don't ask me to leave because I don't want to leave. Where you, where you go, I will go. Where you lay, I will lay. Where you die, I will die. And the God of your salvation is going to be myself, is going to be the God of my salvation. I, I want to serve your God. Amen. Don't ask me to stop following you because I don't want to. I want to continue to serve the Lord. And I believe, I, told people, I have told people many times, I believe that the, that the reason was that Ruth wanted to serve the God of uh, Naomi because Naomi was a good example to her. She must have made an impact upon her life by showing her what it was to be faithful to the God that you and I serve. Can somebody say amen? So not one of God's promises goes unfulfilled. You need to understand that. In, in uh, the book of uh, Joshua, chapter 23, verse 14, amen. This is what it says. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all of your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. What God promised you, nothing has failed. All are come to pass unto you. Everything's going to come to pass. And not, not one thing has failed thereof. Nothing that I have told you will ever fail. God does not lie. Hello, somebody. Amen. What God says, he keeps his promises to you and to me. And all we have to do is trust him and in the promises that God has given to us can somebody say amen all you got to do is trust him all you got to do is amen believe in his promises hallelujah and trust in them can somebody say amen trust in him and in what he says can somebody say amen praise the name of the lord hallelujah because god amen faithfully cares for us can somebody say amen praise the name of the lord because remember we're talking about the providence of god I'm talking about the divine protection and the guidance of God. Especially we need to be reassured of that during the times in which we are living. Because there are uncertain times. But like I told you as I began this lesson. Amen. You can be certain of this. Of what is written in this book. That is. You can be absolutely certain of. Amen. With everything you got. It's the best insurance policy you could ever have. Just make sure that you're right with God. Live for God. Make sure that you're in him and he's in you. And how do you do that? By fasting, by praying, amen, and, 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 and uh, reading the word of God and studying the word of God, making it a part of your life. Brothers and sisters, God faithfully cares for us the way a shepherd cares for his sheep. Yes, he does. We're talking about the providence of God, the guidance and the protection of God. Amen. Psalms 23, 1, all the way to verse 6 says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil like the days in which we are living today. Even though we're walking through the valley of uncertainty, the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me and even in the presence of my enemies. You anoint as my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever wow what a what a declaration amen from the psalmist because he's declaring that god faithfully is going to care for us 
the same way a shepherd cares for his sheep. Because the Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. When the wolf comes, amen, even when it comes with sheep's clothing, amen, the shepherd can discern that and chase that devil away. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord, and he will take care of you. He'll let you, he'll allow you to lay down, lie down, and beside the still waters, and hallelujah, he'll restore your soul, and he'll lead you in the paths of righteousness because of his own name's sake. He wants you to be, hallelujah, amen, a, a, a good representative of him, of him in this world. And yea, though we walk through this valley of uncertainty and the shadow of death, you don't have to fear because he is with us. Amen. He shall take care of us. His rod and his staff, amen, are going to comfort us as we walk through these times of uncertainty and not knowing what tomorrow may bring. And even though, amen, he, he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, even though there are those that don't like us, even though they want to persecute us, even those that don't want to <clears throat> believe, amen, in the word of God or believe in how we live, Amen. He still anoints our head with oil and our cup runneth over. We're blessed in, 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 in immensity. God blesses us even though, hallelujah, sometimes we even feel like we don't deserve it. Man, I don't deserve all these blessings. Man, we haven't made it so good. Sometimes I even feel guilty. But the Bible says he anoints us even, hallelujah, in the presence of our, as the, as the enemies are, are, hallelujah, at a distance. Amen. Watching with, hallelujah, enviousness and, and jealousy. Amen. He anoints our heads with oil and our cup is running over, hallelujah, regardless of what they think or how they feel. And he goes on to say and declares with a certainty, with any, with a measure of, of certainty, amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can somebody say Amen. When we please the Lord, he even makes our enemies to be at peace with us. Do you believe that? Let's read what his word says. Proverbs 16 and verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Man, that is, that is awesome. And so you know what I when I read this scripture I always got to re remind myself I need to be I need to please the Lord more in my life. Amen. I need to please the Lord more. I need to please him more. I need to amen. I need to know his word. I need to live according to his word. I need to please him. Hallelujah because in doing so he'll make even my enemies be at peace with us. Hallelujah. We don't Amen. We say, I don't know why I can't get along with people. Let me tell you something. Maybe we're not doing what God wants us to do. Hello, somebody. Because he says, if you did, I'll even make those people that don't like you. Amen. Get along with you. Can somebody say amen? Because you need to understand that all rulers are under God's control. Everybody. Everything's under God's control. Because he's in control. Amen. He's, amen. He's... Amen. Absolute ruler and control of all that is. Can somebody say amen? So everything is under God's control, even the rulers. Amen. Proverbs 21 and 1 says this. The, heart, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whatsoever he will. Everything going on today, brothers and sisters, is in the plan of God. Everything that's going on today. Because Amen. Mankind has the power of destiny in his hands. But because they don't repent, God has to fulfill that which he has to do because of man's wickedness. Can somebody say amen? Because man has the power of destiny in his hands, but because they won't repent, amen, God's going to have to fulfill that which he has, amen, has to do because of man's wickedness. In other words, the word of God is going to come to pass. Amen. Even though, hallelujah, it might not be pleasant. Even though we might have to go through some stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. All you have to do is stay close to God. I'm going to tell you right now. Stay close to God. How? Pray. Fast. And read the word of God. Amen. Consecrate. And stay close to him. 
Hallelujah. And he will lead, guide, and direct you through these turbulent times. Can somebody say amen? Second Chronicles seven fourteen says this. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, he's not talking to, he's not talking to people that are in the world. He's talking to the church. Amen. He's talking to God's people. He says, if they would only humble themselves and pray, hello, humble yourself, pray, there's, 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 the, there's the key right there, and seek the face of God, and it also says, and turn from their wicked ways. Even people of God has, have wicked, even people of God, amen, have some bad ways. Then he says, well, I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. That's the promises of God. You see, you need to understand God has sovereignly planned what shall come to pass. Let me say that again. God has sovereignly planned what shall come to pass. And he will sovereignly carry out his plans. Because he's in control. It's what he says. And he needs to fulfill. God has to fulfill his word. He's not going to say something and then go against it. He's going to say it. It's already been said. And now he's going to fulfill it. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, 11, 12, and 13. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah beginning to chapter 46 verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Verse 11, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass, because I have proposed it. I will also do it. I'm not going to just say it. I'm going to fulfill what I, I'm going to do what I say. Verse 12, hearken unto me, you stout-hearted that are far from righteousness. Mm-hmm, you that are all full of pride, amen, that are far from righteousness, Amen. Verse 13, I bring near my righteousness, and it shall be not far off, and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Can somebody say amen? Let me make this very clear. As long as we trust in the Lord and serve him, regardless of what happens, everything is going to be all right. Amen. As long as you're in God, that is. If you're in the Lord, I'm going to make this very clear. As long as we're trusting the Lord and serving him, regardless of what happens, everything is going to be all right. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as you're right with God, amen, everything's going to be all right. Because remember what God says in his word, amen, as we come to a close here this, amen, this evening, here this Wednesday evening, amen. Philippians 1, 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Can somebody say amen? Nobody wants to die. I'm not looking to die. I'm trying to do my best to live as long as I can. Stay healthy and, uh, amen, and do what God wants me to do and be a blessing to God's people and to the church of the living God and to my own family especially. Hello, somebody. Amen. But you need to remember as I come to a close of this message, God has it all in his hands. Yes, he does. The providence of God is greater than just a few things. The providence of God is Hallelujah. He is in absolute control. He's got it all in control. And all we just have to do is understand that there is a bigger picture here. And you and I are in the best part of that picture. Can somebody say amen? God bless you this evening. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor and the glory. And we thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to be here tonight in one mind and one accord to inquire in your temple and to, to receive, amen, your word here this Wednesday evening, Almighty God.
We give you the glory and the honor. We thank you, O Lord. Hallelujah for your word. We thank you for your will, your word, your ways. Almighty God, let them become our ways. Let your word become part of us. Let, let us perform your word. Let us live your word. Let us apply your word to our every area of our life, Almighty God. Especially in these times of uncertainty. Knowing that for a certainty, everything's going to be all right. As long as we're in you and you are in us. Help us, Almighty God, to apply what we have heard here tonight. And be here as endurers of your word. That when you return, you will find us faithful and fruitful. And staying close to you as, as much as we can, Almighty God, in these times. And we give you the honor and the glory. And we thank you, Lord, here tonight. And pray. And in this prayer, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for being with us tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. We just need to remind everybody to, amen, pay your tithes and give your offerings unto the Lord and Amen. And uh, fulfill God's financial plan that the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain it. Amen. So let's continue to be faithful to God's financial plan. We have some prayer requests here today. So we want to go through the names like I always do. And amen. bear with me. Amen. And these are for healing and for different reasons. Most of them are for healing. But let me go through the names and then we'll pray at the end of this Amen. At the end of this announcement. Also, just a reminder, amen, that on Sundays, amen, our services in Spanish are at 11 on Sundays in the back parking lot and then at 1 p.m. in the afternoon in English. Okay, and we're going to continue to go with, amen, with that as long as we can, as long as it doesn't rain on us. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Amen. Prayer request for Joe Gonzalez for healing. Josie Nieto for healing. Lorenza Gambo for healing. Beatriz Aguirre for healing. Dalvina Diaz for her health. Stephanie Navarro spiritual strength. Brother and sister Quiroz for strength. John Marcelo for strength. Esther Naomi Robert Emmanuel Jaime for healing. Maria Luz Cardenas for strength. Belinda Hernandez for deliverance. Antonia Romero for strength. Allison Carolina Riola. Amen for uh, uh, amen restoration. Anaya Mesa. For healing, Gilbert Amaraz, liver transplant, Noah Marin, amen, for strength, Helen Delgado for healing from her back problem with Maria, Mario Castellon Jr., bringing back safety for the Marines, Pauline Gutierrez for healing, Philip Martinez for a liver transplant, Ruben Quiroz, returned safely from Uganda, Carmen Gamboa, recovered from her gallbladder bladder surgery, Baby Bella for healing from her heart problems, Elisha Jackson for healing, Maria Cardona, Amen for healing and, and restoration. Olga physically. Olga Padilla, amen for healing. Betty Caballero for healing. Andrea Turner for healing. Frank Corona for healing. Camille Garcia, amen, healing from the coronavirus. The Oli Olivares family for healing. Their father passed away from the virus. The Patino family, amen, they lost their, amen, their loved one. Donna Patino passed away. And so we pray for pa Pastor Henry Patino from the Church of Azusa. We pray for him also. We want to pay, pray for our uh, dear friend, Bishop Abel Rodriguez, amen, to recover from the stroke that he suffered. And, and brothers and sisters, let's continue to pray for our, our friend, Bishop Abel Rodriguez, amen. We've known him for many years. He was our bishop for eight years. He did a, a tremendous job for us here in the East Los Angeles district, amen, serving God's people. And so, amen, uh, we need to pray for him that God would help him to Amen. Make a, a speedy recovery and rehabilitate. Amen. From this stroke that has affected him. Can somebody say amen? So right there where you're at, let's pray. Jesus, God Almighty, we come before you to give you all the honor and the glory. And we pray on behalf of all those that we have, we have mentioned here this evening. God, those that need to be healed, heal them. Those that need to be saved, save them. Those that need to be restored, restore them. Those that need to be delivered, deliver them. And those that need comforting, comfort them. That we might be sure to give you all the honor and the glory, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer, hallelujah, and hearing our cry and answering our prayer here tonight. God Almighty, hallelujah, as we give you all the honor and the glory, hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name, we declare these prayers answered for your honor and glory in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Continue to pray for this country. Continue to pray for our country, amen, and all that's going on. 
Amen. All these uncertain times. Amen. But God certainly knows what he's doing. Amen. So we're going to confide and trust in the Lord. Amen. That God's perfect will is going to be done. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you for being with us tonight. Amen.